I'm Mathias Gredel Nørvi. I'm the CEO of Cyber. Subway Surfers launched uh, phenomenally. So the success of Subway Surfers, the trajectory was just insane. The team definitely felt that they could walk on water. There was a lot of high energy, a lot of passion. And basically they were just pinching themselves that this is actually happening. We've made a global mega hit. And the team was super excited to then see what's the next venture, what's the next thing we want to do. That's how Blades of Brim came about. Blades of Brims is a type of combat runner where you're slaying monsters and visiting portals to progress in the game. And we were featured globally. We were the editor's choice in all app stores all over the world. And we thought that that would also translate to becoming a next mega hit. But we had to realize that this is not a given. Even though we have so many downloads on Subway, Blades of Brim became a great business card in terms of art style, graphics, moment to moment gameplay, but not a commercial success and not the next most downloaded game. On the back of Blades of Brim, I think there were a lot of passionate ideas and a lot of passionate teams that wanted to explore something outside of Runners. And that meant that we explored both some MMO RPG type games, we also explored some dungeon crawlers and tried out different things that we then invested heavily in. The projects we started between 2015 and 2017 had a lot of love from the people that made them. They were heavy players of those types of games but had limited experiences in creating those type of games. During 2017 and during 2018, we had to realize that the projects we were working on besides Subway Surfers, the success of the games was not imminent. So we had to make some tough decisions to kill projects. That was a new thing in Cyber. Killing projects is never fun. There's a lot of blood, sweat and tears going into creative processes. So deciding to can or icebox a project always comes with a sort of immediate frustration. But it was also a learning opportunity for the entire company that just because we had one success didn't mean that any following title would necessarily be met with the same excitement as Subway Surfers had initially. Continuing the Subway Surfers legacy is uh, its a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure, I gotta say. Coming into Cybo and having Subway Surfers as an IP that like, you know, you look at and say, how do I take this further? You have to put yourself in the shoes of the players and understand what it is they fell in love with. Sometimes things work, sometimes they don't. I get so much help from the people who have been through those hard times because they have the knowledge and they have the, uh, the generosity to share that with me. That's not something that every company has. While we were trying out different game projects and investing heavily into creating next successes for Cyber, Subway Server still performed. We were still one of the most downloaded games, but at the same time, we also knew that we were a five, six, seven year old game that people said, oh, I used to play that instead of this is the game I keep playing. We were trying to figure out what is it actually that is our USP? What are we known for? What is it we want to do with the brand? What do we want to do with the IP? What do we want to do with the games? So coming to the end of 19 was probably the toughest period in cyber history because the energy in the studio, the realization of not being able to just launch successes, it meant that we probably had the lowest morale. This is still at the time where we had the biggest transformation ahead of us, becoming the publisher of Subway Surfers. Cyber is very different than it was when I joined three and a half years ago. At that point of time, I think we were going in a lot of different directions. So we had to make a lot of structural changes. We really had to prioritize. But I think back in 2020, when we became the publisher of Subway Surfers, that was a, a really important moment in time for us. Becoming publishers of Subway Surfers was a natural next step for us as a studio. The collaboration and the co-production with Kilu from 2012 to 2020 was a perfect partnership in the sense that they brought capabilities we didn't have. And even if Bonus Investor had the idea or the IP, Kilu and their team definitely helped the game become what it was. But as that first contract it was about to expire, it was also clear that we wanted to unfold the wings and see what our game teams could do if we were uh, able to test more things and try more things directly into the game. Working on Subway servers is not really an easy job. The thing is we have to make a game that looks good compared to all the new stuff out there that's only running on the newest iPhone. But we are running on really, really old devices. So we need some special voodoo powers in order to be able to, to pull that off. We do that because a ton of people out there still don't have the newest phone available. And we want to make games for as many people as possible. Becoming the publisher of Subway Surfers was a massive undertaking. We had published Blades of Brim back in 2014, but we hadn't published 
the most downloaded game in the world, and that meant that we had to learn a lot of disciplines that had until then been handled by Gilliam. All the things that a fully-fledged publisher had tons of experience with, but that we had to learn from scratch. Plus, you have to remember that the market has moved significantly since the game launched in 2012. So there was a lot of technologies available that we wanted to utilize in the game and see how we could benefit the players in a bigger way. So what we've tried is to test more things, to be more agile in our development processes, to empower the team to try out more things and take some risks. Since we became the publishers of Subway Surface, everything has changed at Simon. We've had a lot of learnings from interacting and engaging more with our fans, activating them on Discord and social media, getting inputs, having them design characters for us through competitions, planting trees, uh, putting more messages into the games in terms of pride campaigns and kindness campaigns, and in general promoting both ecology and environmental sustainability, diversity, and inclusivity. One of the cool things that we can now do is we've actually with our Super Run campaign running, we can actually immortalize one of our biggest fans in the game as a character. For a couple of years now, we've been doing fan-made characters. Just seeing their reaction, how it's now in the game, it's just like amazing. And it makes a lot of our artists and other people around the company really excited too. When you look at how many characters there are, you just really have something or someone that's relatable to everyone out there, right? You end up just really hitting people in the fields. There's so much relatability and immersion there. So with all the features we've added to Subway Surface, what we can see is that we're going viral again all over the world. People are starting to talk about Subway Surface again. We're coming back into the charts. That's a different type of virality than what we've had for a while. It's literally uh, insane that we, 10 years in, have some of the best days, best weeks, best months. That doesn't happen in the game industry. The fact that we've been able to turn around and, and reinvigorate the game is just uh, something that we're super proud of. I do get amazing reactions these days when mm. I tell people that I work for Subway Surfers. Mm. It used to be that Subway Surfers was yeah. the biggest game you didn't yeah. know of, but now, but now we're, you know, people know the name. Subway Surfers means a lot of things to a lot of people, so honestly it's an honor to take something that's that important and then be trusted with running with it. There's a lot of stuff that I would love to share, but I can't. Really, what we're building here is thanks to everybody who's ever contributed over the years, and that is something that is very, very precious. What's next for Subway? We want to explore the game and the IP even further. We have ideas for what to put in the game. We have more features coming. And then for the IP at large, we want to expand it into new genres. Some of the things we tried back in 16 and 17 but weren't capable of doing, now we have the right people and the, the bandwidth to actually make games in different genres. This also allows us to give a little sneak peek of the things we've been working on. And without further ado, let me introduce you to Subway Surface Tech. My name is Owen. I'm a game director here at Cybo. I'm really excited to be able to introduce to you our new game here at Cybo, Subway Surfer's Tag. Subway Surfer's Tag is an arena blitz brawler where you get to play as Jake and the crew, taking on the guard and his mechanical minions in a way that you've never seen before. The main enemy of the game is guard and his mechanical minions, which he's ordered off some sort of sketchy website. There's something cool about jumping on a hoverboard and that's what we focused on for the gameplay. We made sure that there's a really cool trick system in there. There's grinds, there's different types of power-ups to pick up, all the while being chased by the guard. And you gotta survive as long as possible, get those new high scores and unlock the content. There's a bunch of different locations the battles take place, including DeLorean Park, the docks, the train yard, and more. 
Taking Subway Surfers off the rails and into a new format was a big challenge. Moving from an infinite runner into what is essentially an open arena, bringing in combat, enemies, new sorts of inputs for the players to explore, took a lot of effort. We really wanted to focus on action arcade but extremely fun gameplay. It took a lot of prototypes to get to where we are, but we're extremely proud of the game that we've made. I hope the players see more of the Subway Surfers universe in this game. Different locations they haven't seen before, get to know the characters a little bit better, and this is just the beginning. Saipo is now where we want it to be five years ago. I think we have a very promising future ahead of us. The things that we have in scope being released in the coming month and years is something that we have been working very hard on for a long time, and that's something that we are super eager to present to all of our fans. We are at Studio completely transformed. We're excited that now finally we're able to bring things to the market.